Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are on to the Terraform state follow-alongs, and these are honestly just all about the uh, Terraform uh, CLI commands, as we do cover Terraform state throughout this course in a variety of different ways, so you can't just really contain it to this one little section here, but let's go explore these things, and so I have a new folder here on the left-hand side, and as always, we're going to go ahead and create ourselves a new main.tf file, and we need to just provision something. And so uh, we've done this multiple times over. So I'm just gonna go back here. And I like to always go back to the count one because I find this is the easiest one to update. And we will go um, down here into our uh, uh, Terraform state file. And well, the <laughs> it's not our actual Terraform state file, but our main file here. And we will go and get rid of the count here. So there's just a single one. And we will just say my server, okay. And I think everything else is fine. This is all good. And so we just have to make sure we are in the correct directory. And I'm going to do a um, terraform init. Okay. And we'll just give that a moment there. And once terraform init is happy, we're just gonna go ahead and do an apply because we do need a state fault to be able to do something, right? Great, so what we'll do here is just type in terraform, uh, apply, and then we will run um, auto approve, okay? And we'll just give that server a little bit of time to provision there, that script, and I'll see you back here in a moment, okay? All right, so after a short little wait there, our uh, instance is provisioned, and now we can go ahead and uh, do some terraform state CLI stuff. So. Just waiting for my console to be a little bit responsive there. Great. And so what I can do is type in Terraform state and it's going to show me a bunch of commands I can run. So we got list, move, pull, push, replace provider, remove, show. Um, I haven't much found a use for push or pull, um, but uh, definitely list, move, um, and show are something that we want to look at. Uh, we could also give remove a try, but I don't find much reason to use that. So let's do the first one, which is Terraform state list. And what that is going to do is it's just going to tell us what instances we have there or resources we have provisioned. Of course, if we had a lot more, this would be a pretty big list. If we do show, it's not going to show us anything because we have to specify something. So we'll do AWS instance and we'll say my server here. And so we should get a lot more detailed information here. Okay, so I'm just going to pull this up here. And as you can see, we are getting all that information about that resource there. Um, if you wanted to rename something, that is a, a, a something you're definitely going to want to know for the exam. And that's where we use the Terraform state move. All right. The way you should think about it is kind of like how um, Bash has move. And that's the way you would re uh, rename things there as well. So imagine that instead of being called my server, we wanted to call this uh uh, our server, I don't know. <laughs> and so if we wanted to rename it like that, then what we'd have to do is type in Terraform state move, and then we would type the old name. So AWS instance, our server. And then from there we would say AWS instance. Oh, sorry, the original one would be my server. And then we would do AWS instance, our server, okay? And so it says moved AWS instance my server to our server. So if we were to open up our state file here, okay, and we were to take a look at the actual name, so we just look at our server, you could say that resource has been renamed. The only issue though is that just because we've renamed it here and we've moved it within our state file does not mean that these changes are reflected um, actually uh, in our in our system. Actually, I don't think it really matters because it's just a name, but let's go see what happens if we do a Terraform plan, okay? I don't think it would matter, but we'll find out. And so down below, I mean, that's just a syntax error because we have changed the name. So this is now our server, right? And we'll just do a Terraform plan here. So Terraform has compared your real infrastructure against your configuration and found no difference, so no changes are needed. Because like the logical name that Terraform is using, the, the our server, 
uh, is just something that's within the state file. It's not like any of those changes are reflected on the cloud on the cloud provider. So there's no need to change anything there. So you know that's pretty much it. Um, you know if we go back to just Terraform state here, we do have replace provider. I'm pretty sure I have used that one before. Let's go take a look at that really quickly. Terraform replace provider. So the command will update all resources using the from provider, setting the provider to the specified to provider. This allows changing the source of a provider which currently has resources in state. So that's kind of cool. Um, so I guess this one here we see we have a HashiCorp AWS to the registry Acme Corp Acme AWS. I don't know if we really have much cases for this, but I guess here the idea is that if you had forked, because all these are public facing, right? So if you forked it and made your own changes, that could be a case where you'd want to uh, do that there, eh? So that's pretty much it. Uh, whoops, that's pretty much it there. Um, so there you go. Oh, and as always, uh, we have to make sure we tear down our resource there. So I'm gonna go type in Terraform, um, apply, auto approve, destroy. there we go. So I'll see you in the next video, okay?